Well, yeah, this is a, a kind of revisit of a, an experiment I did some time ago. This is an old uh, microwave oven style magnetron. I've used this for a few experiments. Uh, its ratings are as such on here, so it's about 2.45 gigahertz and it's about an annual voltage of 4.35 kV. Um, I'm going to try and pulse it again. Uh, the last time I pulsed it using a capacitor. So this was the uh, simple circuit I used last time. We're just pulsing it by discharging a capacitor with a relay into the magnetron itself. So we're completely reliant on the uh, discharge speed of the capacitor to what sort of pulse we form on this. I want a little bit more control than that this time. So this is more of a typical um, method of firing a magnetron uh, with, a, with a pulse. It tends to rely on the device here called a thyrotron. Uh, this is an old device now. It basically predates uh, thyristors or SCRs. Uh, but it needs a pulse forming network because these, like uh, SCRs, when they fire, they stay conducting uh, until the, uh, the 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 current through them is switched off. Uh, this also uses a pulse transformer to f to form the actual high voltage pulse across the magnetron. So not particularly easy circuit if you want to have different pulse lengths. This is actually a, th a thyrotron uh, for radar. This is a, a hydrogen filled. Thyrotron, quite obsolete really these days, but you need to have devices like this in order to switch the high voltage pulses, which can be in the order of you know, 10 kV or thereabouts for, for switching, which is generally above what's capable of semiconductors. So what about uh, electronic converters now that they're used these days for ovens for, for supplying the high voltage supply, anode supplies? Uh, this one is just one such thing and these are controlled by opto isolators so you can actually control the, the powering for externally. They have a, a, a rectifier for full wave rectification so they have a, a, a DC output and they're high frequency so you could pulse them at a fairly high speed but on test um, uh, I think the fastest this would produce a pulse was the minimum clock that it would take as an input before it would operate, which uh, is 10 oscillations uh, on, on the input clock, which was effectively 70 milliseconds. So you can get a 70 millisecond pulse using this arrangement. You do have to have an external supply for the heater because this incorporates a heater connection but obviously that you have to allow time for the heater to heat up so having it previously heated from an independent supply allows you to, to pulse it at the maximum pulse speed. So I was looking at this as an electronic switch. This is uh, quite an interesting way of pulsing very high voltages uh, quite quickly, relying on the feature of uh, MOSFETs. Uh, in fact, in this case, uh, car car silicon carbide MOSFETs, um, that they can actually be cascaded uh, and use the multiple of their insulation or breakdown voltages to achieve a very high voltage uh, across the chain. Um, this can be fired from a low pulse on the gates and cascaded through. So this is quite an interesting uh, idea, create a very high voltage pulse. Do have the problem that in magnetrons uh, the casing is the anode, which really should be ground, which means you're dealing with a very high voltage minus. Uh, and obviously the first gate is the of the first part of the first FET is the trigger, so I need opto, an opto-isolated circuit here to allow me to pulse that. But it's worth having a go at this. So, so this is the uh, setup. This is now the uh, high voltage switch. Um, hope it should be good for um, almost 10,000 volts, although that is the maximum for the breakdown of the uh, the optocoupler here. So this is the optocoupler at this point and we've got our four um, silicon carbide uh, MOSFETs. We have our high voltage minus here at, uh, and also this is our switched output here. We have a DC supply supplied from part of a winding on this transformer. This is a, an isolation transformer for the heater supply to the uh, magnetron itself uh, and on the back of that we have a small 10 volt supply here um, feeding onto the board 
to give me the, uh, the the floating supply to trigger the devices and also uh, operate the the optocoupler. I've got this just now driving, been driven from a just a ZVS oscillator. I can change that to something else later, uh, but uh, that 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 way it gives us our three point whatever it is volts here for the uh, heaters for the um, magnetron itself. Uh, so in theory, what we have is the accumulated breakdown voltage of these three de four devices. Each of these are rated at 1.7 kV, so we should be good for over 6 kV for this particular setup. Now I say the only other thing I would maybe do is to have this as a fiber optic coupled uh, unit rather than have just an opto isolator. Uh, even though this one is okay up to 10 kV, but. Uh, Obviously, this is could potentially be quite a high current along with the high voltage. You don't want anything ending up on your control side. So all this uh, complexity is really required because of the uh, the uh, magnetron itself. The magnetron has got. Uh, uh, a casing which has got to be grounded. It's, you could have it floating at a high voltage but that gives you a, a major headache for an, an a danger point of view. Uh, these things are incredibly dangerous. The, uh, if the casing could technically be at maybe 6 kV, uh, well certainly on maybe, maybe 4, kV, 4 kV and above uh, positive so you really want to have this casing grounded um, but to do that you then have to have the, 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 the cathodes sit, cathode sitting at the, a minus potential uh, and isolated from the grounded anode um, that gives you the other problem then that you have to have your your three volt heater supply floating uh, and able to sustain uh, the kind of breakdown from you know, about 6 kV to ground so that is why I've had to use a, an x-ray style trans heater transformer there to do give me that amount of isolation um, and it also means that our high voltage switch has to sit at a high voltage negative uh, and has to its supply also has to be able to float so that's why it's derived from here as well and that's why we need an opto coupling so we can switch it externally so a bit complicated because of the the situation being an an anode ground but uh, that's what we've got so far this is a test at 4.6 kV the LED is in series to indicate the discharge we are registering a little bit of microwave output as well. So a little bit disappointing there, um, there's a little bit of leakage current starting to appear and uh, on further investigation these two uh, MOSFETs have actually gone uh, source drain short. So we have now got two, uh, two faulty devices. It's really interesting how these two have failed which are in the center of the chain the, the one at the very negative end is okay the one at the top end is starting to slight leakage in it um, but these two have gone short uh, it seems to be still functioning otherwise but the failure seemed to occur about four four and a half kv so there's something not quite right with this so i think it's a bit more of investigation so i think there's going to be a sequel to this one